Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Commander Tripod. As always, my name is Pope. In the Commander Tripod, we take a look at Commander gameplay through a three-player lens, showcasing decks from pre-cons up to CEDH and exploring the differences that one less player makes. If you enjoy our content, one of the easiest ways you can support the channel is by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. It goes a long way and it helps let us know that we are producing the content that you want to see. If you'd like to go the extra mile to support the show, consider joining our Patreon. You'll gain access to the Patreon exclusives in the Commander Tactics Discord, as well as other great perks. Your support allows us to continue producing and improving the EDH content that you're about to enjoy. And lastly, if you want to get more involved with the Commander Tactics community, you can join our public Discord. Everyone is welcome and you can find a link to join down in the description below. But now, let's take a look at the three contenders that we'll be showcasing in today's match. Up first in turn order is Flying V, playing Sapling of Kalfanor. This Golgari Treefolk tribal deck aims to summon big, toughness Treefolk to dissuade opponents' attacks, all while drumming up lots of card advantage and a wide board state. V's starting hand contains a Twilight Mire, Tranquil Thicket, Forest, Gaia's Touch, Thought Vessel, Soul Ring, and Maelstrom Pulse. Next up, I will be piloting my Angry Cats Renin Siri deck. This mostly cat tribal deck aims to generate lots of tokens thanks to my commander's ability and then have big combat steps using pump spells to mow down my enemies. My starting hand contains a command tower, an unclaimed territory, a forest, Selesnya Signet, Feline Sovereign, a Robo Roar of the World, and Return of the Wildspeaker. And then rounding out the pod we have Devin playing Tetsuko Umazawa Fugitive. This mono blue deck is all about infect. Small, unblockable infectors get in and then proliferate spells finish them off. Devon's starting hand contains two islands, a silver mirror, a scroll thief, curiosity, ghostly pilfer, and library larcenist. And without any further interruptions, it's game time. V starts things off by playing a twilight mire. He taps the twilight mire to play a soul ring, and then taps the soul ring to play a thought vessel, passing the turn. I play a command tower and pass. Devon plays an island and passes. V plays a swamp and taps out to play his commander, Sapling of Kalfanor. I play a forest return and cast a Selesnya Signet. Devon plays an island and casts Silver Mirror, passing the turn to V. V plays a swamp for turn and then heads to combat. He attacks me with his commander. When the commander attacks, it triggers his second ability. He reveals Unstoppable Oak from the top of his library, gaining 5 life, losing 5 life, and putting the card into hand. In his second main, V casts Gaia's Touch, a very interesting extra land spell for green heavy decks. Then he ships the turn to me. I play a Sun Petal Grove for turn and then tap 4 to cast my commander, Rin and Siri Unseparable. I pass the turn to Devin. Devin plays an island for turn. He taps 2 to cast his commander, Tetsuko Umazawa. And then he taps his other 2 mana to cast Necropede. V starts his turn by tapping 5 mana to cast Timber Protector, a tree folklore that also provides additional protection. He then moves to combat, swinging his commander at Devon. Off the attack trigger, he reveals a swamp. Devon doesn't block and takes 3 commander damage. V then passes the turn to me. I play an unclaimed territory naming cats. I then tap out to cast Keeper of Fables. On cast, I create a 1-1 dog token from my commander, and then head to combat. I attack Devon with my commander. He chooses not to block, I deal 4 commander damage, and draw a card off Keeper of Fables. Devin then remembers the commander damage from V's turn and adds that on as well. With nothing more to do, I pass the turn to Devin. He starts his turn by tapping 3 mana and casting Scroll Thief. He then taps his Silver Mirror for a blue to cast Curiosity, targeting Tetsuko. Devin heads to combat, swinging Tetsuko at V and Necropeed at me. Thanks to Tetsuko making them unblockable, V takes 1 damage and I gain 1 infect. Devin draws a card off Curiosity trigger and then passes the turn. V starts his turn by heading straight to combat. He attacks Devon with his double indestructible commander. He reveals Deadwood Treefolk off the top of his library, gaining 6 and losing 3. Devon chooses not to block, taking 3 more commander damage. In his second main, he sacrifices Gaia's Touch, adding 2 green to his mana pool. He uses 1 of the green to cycle a Tranquil Thicket. And then he taps out to cast Deadwood Treefolk. With nothing left, he passes the turn. I start my turn by playing the mountain. I tap 3 to cast Druid's Repository. I then move to combat, sending my whole board at Devon, adding 3 counters to the repository. He blocks my dog token and takes 8 damage. I draw a card off the Keeper of Fables, 
and in my second main, I tap 3 and remove 2 counters from the repository to cast Regal Caracal. On cast, I generate a 1-1 dog token thanks to my commander. And when Regal Caracal enters, I create 2 more 1-1 cats with lifelink. Then I pass the turn to Devin. Devin moves straight to combat as well, sending everything at V. With it all being unblockable thanks to his commander, he deals 2 points of damage and 1 point of infect. On damage, he gets to draw 2 cards off Curiosity and the effect from Scroll Thief. In Devin's second main, he casts Brainstorm in hopes of finding some answers to the current board state. He drops an island for his land and then taps 2 to cast Skyship Plunder. With nothing left, he sends a turn to V. V plays a Swamp for turn. He taps 6 mana to cast Thorn Tooth Witch. He then taps his last mana to cast Treefolk Harbinger. The Harbinger cast triggers Thorn Tooth Witch, allowing V to give another target creature plus 3 minus 3. He points this at Tetsuko. Devin responds by casting Lazatet Plating in order to give his commander Hexproof and amassing a 1-1 zombie. The spell resolve and Tetsuko lives to see another turn. When the Harbinger ETBs, V is able to tutor any tree folk to the top of his library. He puts Bosk Banneret on top and moves to combat. He sends the tree folk army all in at Devin. His commander triggers off the attack and he reveals the banneret that he tutored for, gaining 3 life and losing 1 life. Devin blocks two of the attackers and takes three more commander damage. After combat, V passes the turn to me. Keeping with the trend, I skip my main phase and head straight into combat. I turn everything besides the Caracol sideways and target it all at V. Five attackers add five more counters to the repository. V declares each of his blockers at my two big cats and takes five point of extra damage. Thanks to Regal Caracol, I gain 14 life off my cats having lifelink. I draw a card off Keeper's ability. And in my second main, I play a mountain for turn, then pay 7 mana, removing all the counters from repository, and tapping the signet to cast Zendikar Resurgent. I then tap 3 additional mana to cast Oro Shards. I then use 3 additional mana to cast Feline Sovereign. On cast of the cat creature, I get a 1-1 dog token, as well as a draw trigger off Zendikar Resurgent. With the dog token and the Feline Sovereign ETB, I get 2 Oro Shards triggers, which I target at V Soul Ring and Devon's Necropede. I then tap 2 mana to cast Crashing Drawbridge, getting a card draw from Zendikar Resurgent and another Aura Shard trigger on ETB, targeting V's Thought Vessel. After all the dust is settled, I pass the turn to Devin. Devin taps 5 mana in his main phase to cast Ixadron. As Ixadron enters, we all flip our non-token creatures to become 2-2 two -two nameless creatures. This leaves Ixadron as a 13-13 and Devin passes the turn. Real quick, I want to take a moment right here to talk about one of the spells that V's opening hand had and he is still holding it, which is Maelstrom Pulse. It says destroy target non-land permanent and all other permanents with the same name as that permanent. With Ixodron flipping everything, we found out that all the creatures were now nameless and that no name is not in fact the same name and therefore Maelstrom Pulse, which seemed like it would be a huge blowout, was now just a dud. Okay, back to the game. With not much mana left to work with, V casts Bosk Banneret and passes the turn. I start by tapping 5 mana to cast Return of the Wild Speaker, choosing to give all of my non-humans plus 3 plus 3 until the end of turn. I then use 4 more mana to cast a game-winning Triumph of the Hordes, giving all my creatures an additional plus 1 plus 1, Trample and Infect. With a total power of 59 on board, I split my army into a 5 and 4, infecting both my opponents and winning the game. This game was a fast one that honestly had moments where everyone felt like a threat. One thing that is clear is that because of Devin and V's back and forth, I was able to fly under the radar for a good portion of this game. V's deck did exactly as it intended, but just didn't have the ability to crash through on either of our boards, mainly because of all of our small creatures. At moments, Devin made it clear that he could load up one player with Infect, but never felt like he could really take down the game. And then once he got behind, it was very hard for his aggro style deck to recover. And then Ren and Siri did what Ren and Siri do, and that is generate lots of tokens, then get in for big burst damage. I do feel like this deck performed well, but the politics of the game played a much bigger role than the power, and that is what makes 3 player commander a little bit more exciting. Hey, thanks so much guys for watching. If you enjoyed this game and want to see more like it, hit that like button and subscribe to know when the next video drops. If you're a Twitter user, you can head on over there to drop us a follow at EDH Tactics, hop in the Discord and get involved. Stay safe out there guys and we'll see you for the next one.